We're going to walk through how to rebuild the box turtle spooler properly and make sure that everything is working as intended. Now, this black and gray box turtle has been together and apart many times, so we're not going to cover the ECAS fittings for this particular module, nor are we going to cover heat sets. We're just going to go through a quick build on everything that you need to check and make sure that you align properly so that you get a nice free spinning spooler. So to get started with the spooler, we're going to clean the gearbox on the N20 motor, just to make sure there's no manufacturing debris in it. And to do that, I'm just going to use some isopropyl alcohol IPA and kind of just flush anything out of the gearbox. Sometimes you will find little bits of metal come out, gray smooth, and it's just stuff you don't want in there if you want this to be reliable. While this is drying off, we will go ahead and go over some of the other things you need to check as you are building your spooler. The spooler is going to have a few parts with built-in supports. They should just pretty much snap right off of the parts. We're not going to be building the blue one, however, because I'm not finished printing it yet. But you just break off these supports. They are hollow, by the way, and discard of them. When installing your magnets, you just make sure that these two pieces attract each other. If you need to, you can secure them with a little bit of CA glue. It won't hurt anything as long as you make sure that it dries before you start messing with it. To get started with the build, I'm going to take an MR63 bearing, drop it in the slot here, and secure it in place with an M3x10 socket head cap screw. And this is threaded into plastic, so we don't need it to be super tight. And just make sure that this bearing still rolls. Next up, I'm going to take another M3x8. An MR63 bearing, and I'm going to secure it to the trigger here. And this is also threaded into plastic, so we just want it to go in snug. We don't need to strip the plastic or crush the bearing. Just until it bottoms out, make sure that the bearing spins and there's not a whole lot of play there. Perfect. Also, while on the trigger, I'm going to go ahead and secure two M3 by eight screws in the side here. We're gonna want about three and a half millimeters of room. And this can be adjusted later when we get to it. These are going to act as the hinge for the filament sensor. And this filament sensor in the spooler that we are building is what tells the box turtle that it's ready to take on some filament. For the 32th gear, this is meant to be somewhat tight. You can usually just press fit the gear on there and this tool here will get it exactly where it needs to be if you bottom the shaft out in the tool and just remove it. Making sure that the lip is facing towards the short end and then we're going to follow this up with the spacer. This just keeps the gear centered between the bearings. Last step of prepping to build this thing, we're going to take our 148 bearings and press some flush into the housing here. You have two sides of the frame, left and right. And they will each take a bearing. Now that our motor is dry and free of any debris in the gearbox, there is a groove here. We're going to set this front plate of the gearbox into the groove and seat the motor fully. You should notice that it is not flush with the side here, it is set back. For the LDO kits, they include grease specifically for this reason. We're going to put not the smallest amount of grease inside the gearbox here. Give it a few spins, pack it in a little bit, make sure that everything is nice and greased. This is what's going to protect these gears for long-term reliable operation. See, everything is still spinning nice and freely. Everything's well lubricated. Now that we have our gear properly lubricated and positioned correctly in the motor mount, I'm going to slot this cover in and secure it with an M3x10 
socket head cap screw. And this piece is what retains the N20 motor inside the gearbox. With the motor mount assembled, there's two zip tie spots on the side here. We're gonna run the wires up and over the motor and then back down in between these zip tie channels. And we're gonna secure the wires firmly with a pair of zip ties. And of course, we're gonna cut those flush. And once we have that all zip tied up, we're gonna take the left frame, place it over the motor, make sure our wires are not poking out here. They're staying flush with the motor. I'm going to take an M3 by eight screw. And I'm not going to tighten this fully. I'm just going to make sure that it keeps our frame here where we want it. With that in place, we're gonna take our 30 tooth shaft that is already assembled, slide it into the bearing, and make sure that these gears right here are generally in line with each other and meshing properly. There's a little bit of play in these frames that allow you to shift the whole thing left or right just so you can make sure that these are properly aligned and they should be spinning nice and free. I haven't found any need to grease the printed gears here. That's kind of on your discretion if you want to do that or not. But now that we have everything properly aligned and everything is spinning freely, we're going to take the right side frame and drop it into place. Before we can close up the spooler frame, we'll need to address our lights. What I'm going to do is give this a little bend up and then back down. You have a bit of a shape like that. And we will set it here in this light retainer. And if you're like me, you forgot to print light boxes, so you're just going to go ahead and put this in without them. So that will roll in from this side, and then we will give it a click. And that keeps the light in the light box. And this also keeps your wires out of the trigger mechanism for the spooler. With all of this nicely aligned, we're going to go ahead and take the right side frame, get the shaft in the bearing, and then we will set our light wires in this channel here and close everything up. Now we will secure the right side frame to the spooler with an M3 by eight screw. And once you have everything aligned where it is closed up and everything spins nice and freely, we can take our trigger from earlier we're going to drop it into here and make sure that we're not rubbing too hard on one side or the other with the screw heads and that this moves pretty much freely. We'll take the light box, put the little hooks in and clip it down. And our trigger should move nice and freely. If you overextend it, it is going to stay out there will be a piece retaining this once it's assembled in the box turtle. But if you have about three millimeters of movement here and it wants to return, it's doing good. Now that we have this assembled, it's gonna be time to put the wheels on. There is a small spacer to interface with the bearing that we'll put on the shaft on each side. And then we will put the wheel hub on each side as well making sure that we're not misaligning anything. And we will just secure them onto the shafts with M3 by six screws. This does not have to be tight. It just needs to seat against the shaft. There's not a lot of forces going on here. We'll do the same on the other side. 
If you go too tight because you're pressing against a solid steel shaft with these screws, you will pull the heat set out. There's no reason that these need to be wrenched on. They just need to get that first little bit of bite into the shaft. I assume you know how to install tires. They just slide over the wheel. We will simply put the wheels on and give it a twist and they lock in. And if you built everything correctly, this will spin super easy. So what you have here is an electric re-spooler with an integrated filament sensor and a status light. While we're here, we'll go ahead and build the prep sensors and I will show you how to adjust that properly. You just have the one printed part and your micro switch that will secure the two M2 by 10 self-tapping screws. Get that one started, get the other one in. Now we're threading into plastic again, so this does not have to be super tight. You don't want to strip the plastic out. And with the spooler in the tray, which mounts with two and three by eight screws, it's done this way so they can come out if they need to be serviced later on. We will take an M3 by eight screw and a washer. Do not forget the washer. We will get that started through this hole into this heat insert here. And what we're looking for is when you insert filament, this trigger here moves away from the sensor. So we want to line this up so that it is closed when the trigger is empty. Just line that up with it. Secure it nice and firm. This also does not have to be super tight. And when you insert filament, it opens the switch. So I'll take this piece of filament here, insert it through the hole, using those two bearings in there that we assembled earlier, inserting the filament, pops that open. Now, if you go to insert filament and it feels like you're hitting a hard stop here, what's likely happening is these magnets are too strong. Uh, with these six by three magnets, it's hard to get them consistent strength. What you can do is either press back on this and insert the filament. Either way, it will tell the box turtle, hey, I'm loading filament and begin the prep process. Or I just added to the repository because these magnets are just all over the place. A little thumb depressor that will go right on top of the PTFE that goes in this hole. And you just press it back with your thumb, put the filament in, you're good to go. So this is an empty spool and of course you can't confirm this until you have one yourself. But just the weight of my finger on an empty spool is enough to overcome the spooler here. Nice and free spinning. So let's get into the reason why this spooler does not use a one-way bearing. The box turtle is one, a relatively compact solution. And using a one-way bearing, you have a fixed diameter of the wheel that it has to be to re-spool reliably. And that wouldn't fit in the form factor, at least in the way that we wanted it. And two, when you have a system that is perfectly capable of doing thousands of changes back and forth, it only takes just one little cat hair or something to fall in there, get in that one-way bearing, and it locks up. What happens when those lock up is you walk away from your printer and it just starts unspooling your filament constantly. Um, with these N20 motors, they are kind of delicate, but in this application, if you clean the gearbox and grease them properly, they're not going to fail on you. Should they fail on you, what ends up happening is they don't do anything. If they don't do anything, the worst thing that's going to happen is you're going to have a tangle and suddenly your print is paused instead of it constantly unspooling your filament for you. With that said, at no point in time are we going to be doing a passive version of this. If you build this correctly, you will find that this is the lowest drag spooler that you have ever laid your hands on.